Hey friends, Chad the Nature Dad here. We got two and one for this uh, this trip out into the woods. Why, Kendall? We found the uh, blue spotted salmon. Yeah, I'm always looking for those in the spring and I never think to look for them in the fall. And lo and behold, while looking for items for my mandala from last episode, I found a blue spotted salamander. Let's take a look. All right, here is that beautiful blue spotted salamander. Check him out, he is really pretty. One of the few salamanders that we find in our state. I'm sure some of you met our salamanders at the Urban Ecology Center. Those are tiger salamanders, much larger than these ones. But this little one here, it will be living underground for winter. So I imagine this might have been its home. A winter, it's gonna probably dig a little bit deeper where it's going to stay underground, where it will not get completely frozen. A couple cool things about salamanders is they start their life uh, as little eggs in some water, typically a femoral pond, meaning that it, the pond doesn't uh, last all year long. And this is really because then those animals that would live in the water like fish, they are not in those ponds that would eat all of the eggs. So salamanders lay their eggs in that water, then they grow up kind of like of a tadpole, and then they crawl up on land. They, what's cool, neat about the blue spotted salamander is that they tend to be able to live in drier soils, but as you can see, the soil here is quite wet. These guys like earthworms, insects, good stuff like that. And they are a indicator species, the health of the environment. So if the environment's right, the ponds that are around are not polluted, and the oak forests around provide enough habitat for them to live when they're land dwelling, then you'll be able to find these blue spotted salamanders. Super cool. Kendall kind of left, she worked back on her mandala earlier. She wanted to touch the salamander and we decided that it was better not to. They are cold-blooded, so they're whatever temperature it is outside, and if we cause them any more stress, it might limit their chances of survival. And I love salamanders, they are so cute. So, blue-spotted salamanders. Hey Danny, Kendall and I just found a blue-spotted salamander. I'm wondering if you've got five facts to share. Thanks, Chad. This is Danny. Hi, everyone. Um, how cool is that blue spotted salamander? I'm so jealous that Chad was able to find one of those. Uh, and because Chad found that awesome salamander, I just wanted to share with you five facts about the blue spotted salamander. So let's do it. Fact number one, the scientific name of the blue spotted salamander is Ambistoma lateral. That first word is the genus Ambistoma that comes from two Greek words, ambi, which has to do with a cup and stoma, which has to do with a mouth. So this genus of salamanders is named for their cup-shaped mouths. And then lateral, which means the sides, and that's specifically referring to the blue spots on the sides of the salamander's body. Fact number two, salamanders and blue-spotted salamanders hear by feeling for vibrations. So they can't actually hear the way we do. They don't have a very good sense of hearing, but rather they have a really good sense of feeling and they're feeling for vibrations in the ground. These are subterranean animals. They spend a lot of time underground or on the ground. And so they're always able to feel the vibrations around them. If they feel the vibration of a bug that might make a good meal, they're gonna to move towards it. If they feel the vibration of a predator, they're gonna move away from it. And so they use that as a way to understand what's going on around them. Fact number three, blue spotted salamanders don't hibernate. So a lot of cold-blooded animals will go into some form of hibernation during the winter where they'll slow all their systems down, they'll go into a deep sleep, and that's how they survive the winter. Not so for blue-spotted salamanders. Instead, they're gonna be active throughout the winter, which means that they need to find somewhere that's safe for them, especially if they live somewhere here, like Wisconsin, where it's gonna get really frigidly, dangerously cold. So some blue-spotted salamanders might look for burrows that mammals have made below the frost line and spend their winter down there. You might find a blue-spotted salamander in your basement for this very reason. That's a nice warm place where they can weather out these cold, cold months. Fact number four, Blue-spotted salamanders are nocturnal. They are most active at night, not during the day. During the day, especially in the summer, the sun is out, it's really hot, and that has the potential to really dry up 
at the blue spotted salamanders. And so instead, they'll do their hunting at nighttime. When it's a little bit cooler out, they're able to retain more moisture and it's safer for them to be out in general. And fact number five, they have a really cool defense mechanism to deal with predators. So if they're not able to escape a predator, it's on them. What they're gonna do is they're gonna hold totally still except for their tail. And they're gonna wiggle their tail a lot, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And what that does is the predator is gonna notice that wiggly tail. Predators look for movement. And so if the only thing they see moving is the wiggly tail, they're gonna go for that tail. A salamander losing its tail is not a great situation, but it's better than losing its entire body, right? And so they use that tail as a distraction for the predator. The predator will go for the tail and then hopefully the salamander is able to scurry away safely. And so these are our five facts about the blue spotted salamander. We'll send it back to Chad the Nature Dad now to wrap things up. All right, friends, this has been Chad the Nature Dad, Kendo, and Danny. Join us next time. Who knows what we're gonna find? Thank you.